So today's plan is to overseed our very first hay field. Uh, most of the alfalfa has died off and the, the field is pretty patchy and it needs some fresh seed in there. And we're gonna drill in the seed today using the Haymaster from Casco Manufacturing. Let me show it to you. So this drill is made over in Shelbyville, Indiana, and I went and I picked this up. This isn't brand new. This is like a 10 year old drill. This is the one that they use for their farm and for their food plots. And it's got a single seed box here on the top. So as we look at the seed chart, you can see it's made for smaller seeds. We've got different types of clover, alfalfa, turnips. We've got different grasses. We've got pearl millet, sorghum, oats, lots of different things in there. And it's gonna work out perfect for, for planting hay for us today. So to adjust the seed rate, you have this lever right here that you can adjust back and forth. And that's gonna adjust how wide it opens up to let that seed drop through. And over here on this side, there's a little bit, there's a gauge where it has a little measuring tape on there and you can adjust it precisely where you want it. So for us, we're gonna be shooting about a um, quarter of an inch, I think is where we're gonna be aiming for to get the proper seed drop that we want. So the seed drops out of the seed box and it goes into these tubes and each tube comes down here and it falls right behind this disc. And this disc actually is at a slight angle and it's gonna open up the ground. It's gonna make a small furrow for that seed to drop down inside of. And then at the back of the drill, you have a packing wheel and that should push the dirt back over the seeds. And for grass, we're not going very deep. We're only going like a quarter inch deep with these discs. So I ended up buying a seed mix for hay fields. This has got tall fescue, meadow fescue, and orchard grass. And I think there's three different types of tall fescue. They're all in to fight free. For a legume, we're gonna add some red clover to the mix. So we have to mix these two together. I usually pre-mix my seed, but I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna mix it in here by hand. I think it'll be good enough. These are 33 pound bags. I'm not sure if this will fit. I think it will. And four more pounds of clover seed. Total of nine pounds of it. All right, I think we're ready. Let's get out to the hay field. So right here's the furrow that it cut and you can open it up and you can see, I think that's a little deeper than what we want. Um, I'm gonna say that's three quarters of an inch. I'm just a little too deep. I'm a lot closer there. I got a quarter inch to half an inch is what it said for the grass I'm planting. I think I'd rather do quarter. All right, I think I got the depth set correctly on the three point and we'll look at one of these furrows that it cut. So it's really gonna be hard to tell. Can you see it right there? It's a gut cut furrow. And as we open that up, it's only, I'd, I'd say just over a quarter of an inch deep. There's grass seed right there. And there's grass seed right there. There's, you can see some right here that came out. So it is planting a piece of grass seed that looked like about every half an inch. So I think that's exactly the way we want it. I think we're ready to go. So as we look over this hay field, it doesn't really look too bad right now, but if you look down, you're not gonna see any alfalfa. And if you look down, you can see all of the patchy spots. You see all these places that are missing seed. So that's why this needs planted. We need to fill in all the bare spots.
Okay, just finished up overseeding this hay field. Everything ran perfect, no problems. I did check the seed about halfway through. I was afraid I'd run out, so I adjusted this from a quarter of an inch on this gauge down to like 3 16 so it would just drop a little bit less. So let's see where we are. All right, well, I've got plenty of seed still in here. I'd say I got a good two inches of seed still left inside. So I may not have had to turn it down, but I'd rather um, not run out you know, and be able to cover the entire field. Now I've got a little bit extra. I can put this on another hay field or a pasture. So I think I'll head over to this other hay field and I'll go ahead and I'll make a few passes just to go ahead and empty out the seed box. So I got a little bit of time left in the day, so I, I think while we got the seed drill on, I'm going to go ahead and try to overseed one of our pastures. I just need to go ahead and make sure all the animals are in a different location and get the gate closed, and then we can fill this up with a different type of seed, and we can go at least get that pasture done. Pick up a few sticks while we're out here. So this pasture here, it's pretty small and um, it's got some patchy spots in it. Like right here's the biggest one. This is where the trash pit was. We had dug out that trash pit and we had covered this all up. And obviously the probably missing topsoil, it's not probably the greatest soil there, but we'll overseed that and we'll just try to get this all overseeded and try to get this looking better. It just, it just doesn't look too good. So here's my bag of pasture seed. This one's actually called Beef Builder. So this has seven different varieties in it. It has two tall fescues, orchard grass, perennial ryegrass. It has bluegrass, and then it has white and red clover in it. So a little more diversity in this mix. And the, what we used on the hay field, that was all varieties that can dry for dry hay. And there's stuff in here that you don't necessarily cut for hay, but it should work well in our pasture. Well, I didn't put as much seed in here since it's just a small pasture. Well, at least we got this pasture done tonight. Something I don't have to worry about. Oh, look at that. I am just on the verge of running out of seed. I about time that perfectly. Or the amount perfectly. So on this pasture, since the grass is shorter, you can see where all the discs cut the furrows and put the seed in the ground. I can definitely see seed inside of the the furrows as I look in this furrow right here you might be able to tell there's grass seed and you can see the grass seed down inside of there so it's definitely planting um, but yeah right in here you definitely can see the grass seed down inside of that furrow and it's not very deep and that hopefully will germinate with definite seed to soil contact so over the course of the next year, we'll find out whether this overseeding ended up making a difference on this pasture. I know I've tried overseeding our hay fields several times. I've tried renting different pieces of equipment and I felt like I've even brought, I've broadcast it. I've broadcast doing a frost seeding. I've tried different methods and I don't feel like 
I got a lot of good germination. Like I don't feel like I had a lot of grass grow from it. I just pretty much wasted a lot of seed it seemed like. So this right here definitely you're getting the seed down in the ground, soil contact. You're actually supposed to be able to use less seed since it has a higher germination rate so you don't have to buy as much seed and it does get seed to soil contact using a drill like this. So hopefully Hopefully this will do way better than I've had in the past trying other methods. So first time using the Haymaster, everything went good. Um, no problems whatsoever. So pretty happy with the way this worked out. And I'm, I was actually really happy that I can open up those furrows and I can actually see the grass seed inside of the furrows. And you could, it was almost enough seed where it was almost end to end. You know, it was almost like every half inch there was a grass seed. So I really do think that um, I know I'm getting the seed exactly where I want it. So I think it's going to work out good. Well, guys, I think that's going to wrap up this video. So I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.